you know if what she said was true about being a natural born seer it's not probably what she thinks is i had to be hyper vigilant because of the environment i was born into and the situation and so because of your family upbringing it forces you to think uh, at a deeper level i wouldn't be surprised though if they were trying to drug me or something to to use some kind of insight they were probably i guess if a kid has a pure heart and people are into witchcraft above you and drugs and all they might be trying to use uh, sorcery through medicine pharmacia pharmacy to try to see something and maybe who knows what they were doing predicting the future trying to predict their future or manifest some kind of reality or something you don't even have it. You're manifesting. Your inner being is always manifesting. God is the providing for you. God is the provider. God sets your storyline, and you know you either find it and step into it, or you keep looking for it. Usually, the reason people aren't manifesting because they're in rebellion. If they just submit to God, it starts to everything starts to flow. Even if it doesn't flow, they have peace in God in Christ alone. You know. They don't need to manifest because they're content in Jesus. But he will, all you have to do is pray. He'll give you the desires of your heart. If that's, if that's what you want, he'll give you the desires of your heart. Manifesting the desires of your heart because God sees you as a son, son of God. There's a shift in uh, society, in the USA society right now, where a lot of people are revealing a lot about themselves, about they're living in fear and stuff, and not trusting in God. Even though they claim to have faith, they're really not walking by faith. And so I was hyper vigilant from a child. And so I guess it stuck with me. And uh, now I'm, I'm not looking at, I'm not, when I'm interacting with anything, person, place, or thing, I'm foreseeing, I'm trying to foresee, I mean, I'm always in the foresight uh, mode. If somebody's speaking words, I'm listening to their words to see what their motive is. Out of the heart, the mouth speaks. I'm seeing what their game is, their motive, their long-term goal, or what is, whatever the game is. Like a salesperson trying to sell you something you don't need, you know? When you look in your rear view mirror, you're actually looking at deja vu because it's happened before. So the people behind you can reveal what they're getting ready to do. Like when you're going down the highway, you can tell when somebody's acting stupid behind you and it might cause a wreck. But looking through the windshield, the front windshield, that's, a, that's another view. Your eye, your your human body represents a deeper truth, you know. Your your head represents Christ. Your body represents the church. Your fingers are called digits. Manual, Emmanuel. You know, when you take and you try to, you go buy you a new bicycle and you have to put it together. You have to look at the manual, but you're using your hands to to manually put it together. So. Jesus is Emmanuel, the spirit, he is spirit. Emmanuel is spiritual manual. So Christ in you is the manual, the Holy Spirit. By his word, it has to line up with the word, you know. Everything is a word. Your hands, your teeth. Actually, teeth goes back to tooth, goes back to truth. Why does teeth go back to truth? Because when you chew your food, you chew it into pieces. 
And as you chew your food into pieces, what happens? You're breaking it into parts. The Bible says, study to show you a self approved unto God, a workman a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So as you take the truth and break it into little pieces, you can see the whole. When you wake up to the fact that Ephesians and Colossians say the same thing, then you see Romans, it says the same thing. Then you see Revelation says the same thing. You see that every verse says the same thing. Every sentence says it. Every word has it encoded in their letters, the way the letter is shaped. The flesh versus the spirit is in every book, every chapter, every sentence, every paragraph, every word, every letter. You can look at a letter and see flesh versus spirit. You can look at a sentence and see flesh versus spirit. Everything that you look at is flesh versus spirit. What does that mean? 3D versus 5D. Your will versus God's will. Your understanding versus His understanding. Going by your own understanding or God's understanding. Trusting God or your own understanding. The flesh mind is contrary to the spirit mind. The spirit mind is counterintuitive to the flesh mind. And so what this flesh creature is trying to do to get ahead or do something is the opposite. It's like the thief, steal, kill, and destroy. They think they're going to get ahead, but it actually sets them back. Whereas you have a spirit-filled person, they're just taking it moment by moment, day by day. It's like they're investors. They're, they're taking it one day at a time, and they're getting ahead of the game. Whereas the thief, they destroy themselves. They're trying to get ahead in the energy of the flesh. They're disconnected from the head, and they that's why they want to cut the head off. Off with their head. Off with their head. I watched it my whole life. I saw family members wanted to be their own boss because they hated authority. But they wouldn't submit to a somebody who was going to give them steady income they wouldn't submit to that steady income and they destroyed themselves sometimes a job is needed to cut out some of your I've said it before a job will teach you to die daily and you're getting paid to it to do it so what's the big deal you know you're actually getting paid to learn how to die daily when you punch a time clock it has a deeper meaning when you when you put on a uniform it has a deeper meaning when you put on a name tag it has a deeper meaning everything has a deeper meaning nothing is what it seems in the in the 3d Everything has a deeper meaning.